morning, everyone. My name is Nathan, and if we haven't had the chance to meet, I look forward to that. I'm going to add my voice into everyone else's and say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. God. And in the process of going from zero babies to one baby nine years ago with my beautiful wife and the mother of our home, I learned something, and that is uh, you can't turn it off. You can't turn off the, the responsibilities. <laughs> in the middle of the night, in the sleeplessness, in the pain, in the wondering, in the waiting, And as I've gone up and down the aisles and hugged necks today and said hello, I also want to say that the Lord sees our mothers and those that have children that have departed and deceased and uh, mothers of miscarriages and midwives of pain and people that have made disciples here on earth. God is carrying us together. In these moments, we need to tap into something beyond ourselves. We need to call upon somebody bigger than us. Whether you're a parent or not a parent or waiting to be a parent or wishing you were a parent or wishing you weren't a parent, we need these moments where we realize that I'm not the one that all of the world is resting on. And as I think about what my wife carries in our home as a mother, uh, she's carrying near enough the whole world. <laughs> but in fact, the buck does not stop just with the moms. That we have a shepherd in the chaos. And that's why we want to start a brand new series this week called In the Chaos. And it's a look at this psalm that if you've been anywhere near church or near a funeral or near a wedding or near anything at all, you've probably heard it, but we're going to take a slow walk through this psalm for the next six weeks. And by God's grace, it won't just be in our ears or in our mouth, it will sink down into our hearts. And so if you can, if you'd like to, with me today, would you stand and let's read through Psalm 23 here together. Good like this, the Lord is my shepherd. There we go, next one. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God, I pray that this psalm would go from our head and our mouth and our ears down into our heart. Lord, would you please be our shepherd today? Be here with us. Surround us. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we want to look at just this first verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This week, a number of things have just broken out in my life that are well beyond my control. Some weights have leveled themselves against me, and I found myself, I wear like a, a fitness tracking sort of watch, and you know, it'll tell me where my heart rate's at. There have just been moments that I, I'm realizing I haven't breathed enough in the last couple minutes. I look down, my heart rate's up in the 80s and the 90s, though I've been seated, and for me, that's, that's not right should be in the 50s. It's where I'm, I'm normally chilling out at, 50s, 60s. Then it swings up to 80s and 90s, and I go, look over at my wife, and I'm like, I think I'm, I think I'm anxious. <laughs> I think I've got anxiety. She's like, well, what are you worried about? Nothing and everything at the same time. <laughs> you ever found yourself there? 
nothing and everything at the same time. There are moments that we need to go, all right, God, there's, my soul needs some work. My inner life is not right. There's something that's not healthy here. I'm carrying burdens I don't need to be carrying, and I don't even know what those burdens are, so I don't even know how to give them to you. God, help. God, help. I think I need a good shepherd in my life. I think that there are some things that are beyond my control. As we look out into our world, I mean, what? Is our, is our nation going to pay its debts or not? I don't know. How is that going to affect you? I don't know. Uh, there's been a fair amount of layoffs just rippling through large organizations in our country. How is this going to affect us? There's economic shift and strife. This week, very personally, a friend of mine and a friend of our collective church family went to be with the Lord earlier this week or, or last week. Keon Brown is with the Lord and used to lead us here in worship. And I remember the songs that he introduced to us and I'm going, God, I think I'm just, I'm grieving and I'm carrying weights and my soul's taking hits. Lord, I need a shepherd. God, I need a shepherd. Whether you feel that today or not, you also, you need a shepherd. All of us are reaching for a shepherd. When we examine our lives, it's full of uncertainty. And as much as we like to think that we'll know what tomorrow will bring, if we pause, yeah, none of us do. None of us do. The best forecasts, the best projections are only that. They're hopes. They're our best guess. The future is uncertain. All of us were brought here today by a million unseen processes that you had nothing to do with. Paved roads, electricity working, lights are on, clothes are being shuttled into our city by the tons every day, food is appearing in our city by the hundreds and thousands of tons every day. There's a million little processes that we had nothing to do with today that brought us safely into this room together. What I'm saying is that each of us are utterly out of control. None of us have control. Our life is moving at a million miles an hour. And so as much as we like to think, I'm the captain of my fate, I'm the champion of my ship, the fact of the matter is we all are deeply uncertain. We are all are not in control. We all are relatively defenseless. And that's not just because of New York's concealed carries laws. That is because when attacks are leveled against our life, we're defenseless. When a friend dies, when an insult comes, when a layoff comes, what can we do? Our soul needs a shepherd. Our anxiety needs somewhere to go. We need to be able to vent it to somebody who cares and can hear us like a good counselor, but also has power to do something about it. Where do we find that intersection? Where do we find it? Like a gnat in the wind, like a candle to the sun, like a rat trap in New York City, our lives are not in control. How do we find these things? Where do we go? What I'm trying to say is that each of us are sheep, and that has been an insult <laughs> in, in the cultural kind of melee. You don't want to be a sheep. You want to be awake. You want to be alert. You want to know what's going on. But I'm here to say... I'm a happy sheep. I'm a happy sheep. And I'm inviting you to also be aware of your sheephood. You are uncertain. You are out of control. You are defenseless. And you're in need of a good shepherd. You're in need of a good shepherd. We all reach for a shepherd. We all want someone to latch on to, or someone or something, something bigger than us, something that can promise us the defense we need, something that can promise us the safety, shelter, security that we need. Let's pause and think about it just for a moment. I know we're, the last time we saw a sheep was like, I don't know, when was the last time? You, they, don't, they don't even really live in America. You have to go to New Zealand or <laughs> Scotland, where... I got to spend 12 years of my life, found my wife, hallelujah. There was sheep over there. There's like cows here. Anyway, what's a shepherd do? 
Who's your shepherd? In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the out of control nature of our lives, in the midst of all that's going on in our economy, in our society, in the midst of exams happening right now. Sorry, students, like their heart rate just jumped 10, 10, 10 points. Uh, in the midst of the layoffs, in the midst of the real life chaos of this world, where's our shepherd? What's he doing? What does a shepherd do? Okay, that sounds good. That sounds pastoral. That's, that sounds, you know, like maybe we can get out of the city and go relax in the field. But what I want to kind of present to us is that the shepherd is for the here and now. The shepherd is for the confusion and chaos of urban life. The, the shepherd is for wherever life finds you right now. Like when I turned to my wife earlier this week and said, I think I'm experiencing a lot of anxiety. <laughs> right now, right now, while I'm driving down the east, the, the, what is the one on the east side, the east side highway, the FDR, at a zillion miles an hour, going, my heart rate is like way too high. This shouldn't be happening. We need a field and battle ready shepherd. And I believe that the Lord is ready to do that if we'll let him. That we have to respond to his shepherd's call. We have to respond to his voice. And agree with the psalmist, King David, who says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Each of us are reaching for some sort of shepherd. Let's pause and consider what does a shepherd do? What does a shepherd do? Well, they lead the sheep to green pastures. They protect and defend against predators. They provide the food and the shelter that these lambs need. But before they do all of that, what does a shepherd do? The shepherd owns the sheep. The shepherd owns them. And he turns what would be a pretty defenseless, useless animal. Do you know that like, sheep need to be sheared lest they grow so much hair that they can't even eat anymore? This is true. I wish I had the picture of that. It's, it's kind of funny, and it's like equal parts funny and sad. Sheep are just useless little creatures that need to be cared for, tended for, and owned in some way to turn them from helpless prey into something useful, into something viable, into something optimized. Something owns you. You've attached your life onto something to turn your life into, from an independent, useless little thing into something useful and optimized. And man, being in New York City, I know many of your lives are optimized. You're running at 100, 100% 100 of the time. You're optimized. You know how to produce. You know how to have an, a stream of output coming from your life all the time because you've attached yourself to some good things that now own you. Let's think about this. We like to think that we own, wow, we own our lives. In fact, our life is given away to a thousand different things. And not all of them bad. I'm not so, just talking about bad things, right? The shepherds own their sheep. Who owns you? Who drives you? Is it your image? Is it your career? Is it your status? Is it your addiction? Is it your family? What is the thing that you've attached your life to to optimize you, to accelerate you, to provide ownership, identity into your life? We all call upon something greater than ourselves to find our meaning, to find our protection, to find a sense of understanding in this chaotic world, to find identity. We all have a shepherd. So who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? Who is your shepherd? And I think David, sitting out under freezing rain and scorching sun, David rejected by his family, David forgotten and left pretty much to rot on the backside of the wilderness and started to call upon the Lord and recognize, God, as much as I need to care for these sheep, I need somebody to care for me. Mothers, as much as you care for your babies, somebody needs to care for you. Fathers, men, women, students, young people, singles, grown-ups, grandparents, as much as you care for the things in your life, you need somebody to care for you. You need a shepherd. We need a shepherd. And I believe David started to call out to the Lord and find him as a good shepherd. 
and he writes down this statement, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And I think David started to get something on him. Because you can read this as a statement of fact, but you can also read this as a statement of attack. Hey, who's your shepherd? I'll tell you who mine is. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And I think David started to get something on him. He had a bunch of older brothers. David needed to get something on him. He had a bunch of enemies. He had lions and bears starting to attack his sheep. He needed to get something on him. And he started to declare, the Lord is my shepherd. I've got something on me. And my encouragement to everyone in this room, get something on you to where you can start to weaponize the Lord as your shepherd. It's not just pastoral. It's not just so I can get out of the city and lie in some grass. It's so that you can fight the battles that are present in your space and time right now. Weaponize this. The Lord is my shepherd. Who's your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. Weaponize it. Get it in you until it's on you, until you can fight that anxiety that has no name and no face. Get it in you. Get it on you. I think David got something on him, and he said, let me tell you who my shepherd is. And he wrote in Psalm 28, the Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Let me tell you who my shepherd is. Psalm 24, the Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Let me tell you about my shepherd, because who's your shepherd? I know who my shepherd is. The voice of the Lord flashes forth in flames of fire. The voice of the Lord strikes in the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and, sh and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry, glory. Let me tell you about my shepherd. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. My Lord gives strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Let me tell you about my shepherd. I think David started to get something on him. And so when people would say, well, who's your shepherd? He said, let me tell you about my shepherd. Psalm chapter 20. Some trust in chariots and others in horses. Some trust in status, other in power. Some trust in intellect and beauty. Some trust in their status in this city. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall, but we rise and stand upright. Let me tell you about my shepherd. Every nation in New York City, know who your shepherd is. Weaponize it. Use it to fight your anxieties. Use it to fight your doubts. Use it to fight your fears. Know who your shepherd is in the face of layoffs, in the face of infertility, in the face of health issues, in the face of real pain and trials. Know who your shepherd is. The Lord is my shepherd. David goes on to say, I shall not want. We are sheep. We have a shepherd. And there's also these wants. There's these things. The Lord is my shepherd as I drove down the road and had anxiety bursting against me. The Lord is our shepherd in the midst of Losing our friend Keon. The Lord is our shepherd in the midst of me losing my brother. The Lord is our shepherd in the midst of health battles and challenges and financial issues. The Lord is our shepherd, and yet uh, the want is still here. How do we do this? Well, how, do we, how do we manage this? How do we trust that God is not a tyrant? How do we trust that God actually has our best intentions in mind? Because, God, I love you, I think, or I'm trying to get to know you, I'm in church for the first time in a while, but how do I know that you're gonna deliver on what I need and what I want because I've got some real things in my life, God, that I need to bring up with you. In the midst of the questions, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the chaos, David brings this to the Lord and says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shout out one. How do we live there? What is going on there? Because certainly we have desires, our soul has desires, we have a lot of needs, what if God doesn't answer? What if God decides not to provide? What if my needs are too big? What if the Lord's a tyrant? What if he just doesn't like me? How do we know? How do we know that God's actually any good at all? Because praise God, all right, the Lord's your shepherd, 
but what if he has it out for me? I want us to pause for a minute and search for the author in Psalm 23. And do some, some literary analysis here. Where's the author? Who's the author? Well, we know that the author's name was David. Probably the most famous shepherd to ever, I don't know, if you can name another shepherd, he's the only one I've got. His name's David. He was a giant slayer. He was a military genius. He was the best king that Israel ever had. They longed for the kingdom of David to be restored. Most mighty king of Israel. Most famous shepherd to ever walk the land. And where does he put himself? How does he write himself into Psalm 23? The shepherd includes himself among his sheep. The shepherd writes himself in as a sheep. The shepherd became such a good king and such a good shepherd because why he identified with the sheep. And as we trust our Lord and trust our good shepherd, God does a little bit more than just write himself in as a sheep. God does a little bit more than just say, you know, oh, I've, I've put it on and I've imagined real hard what it's like to be a human. We serve a God who doesn't just imagine it. He doesn't just write it in. God became a person. The shepherd genuinely became a sheep. The God of all gods and the king of all kings, the one who spoke and created time and existence and galaxies. The Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, who spoke and created a trinity of trinities of time and matter and space. Then incarnates himself and says, I'm not just going to imagine myself as part of the story. I'm going to become part of the story so I can lift people out of their darkness. So I can enter in and fight their depression one-on-one. -on -one. So I can fight the things that are destroying my sheep man-to-man. -man. God doesn't just imagine it. The good shepherd enters in as a sheep. God becomes a person. He lives among us. The sheep, born among the sheep in Bethlehem attentive to our every need. God doesn't just conceptually know that we need food and clothes. He knows because he's eaten food and he's worn clothes. He knows that we need pleasure. He knows that we need safety. He knows that we need love and meaning. He knows what it is to lose a father. He knows what it is to be betrayed by a brother. He knows what it is to experience death. He knows what it is to walk through death and come back to life. Because our shepherd didn't just come to empathize. He came to bring victory. He came to bring authority. He came to bring power. He came to free us from the needs behind the needs that we think that we need. All the time, my children run up to me and are like, Dad, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Thinking, kid, our house is full of food. And not to mention, I'm saving for your college fund, kid. I've got your needs you don't even know about. I'm, I've got money in the bank. I've got food in the cupboards. And then we come to God and we're like, God, I need this. He's thinking, you're not even thinking about death, hell, and the grave. Let me tell you how I've got the victory. Let me tell you how I've provided for the things that you're not even concerned about at the moment, but you should be. God's got us at such a deep level. He's got us. He's got us. He's not a tyrant. He's a servant. He came to serve and not be served. He came to lift us, not to depress us. He came to build his kingdom underneath us, not over top of us. He came to lift us up. He came to serve us. And we need to teach our soul to find our rest in him. Because without him, our soul's super restless. We're always looking for the next thing. You ever found that? Students, you're going to graduate pretty soon. And right now you're thinking, That's gonna, I'm going to feel like a million bucks. I'm going to be on top of the mountain. I'm going to be the best ever. It's going to feel so good. And then the, the Monday after the Saturday, it's Monday again. And it's going to feel like any other Monday. 
And then the anxiety of finding a job and who are you and what career and this and that are going to burst against you. And then Monday becomes worse than ever. And then you're going to get that job and you're going to get that career. And you're going to think, this is it. This is the moment. I'm going to feel the feels. And guess what? Monday is going to come and, and, it, and it's just going to be another Monday again. And no matter what achievement we get in life, it doesn't fill the thing that we really want. The need behind the need. The desire behind the desire. The want behind the want. The good shepherd came to answer the thing that we truly need. Existential, I've got you. Now and for eternity. I've got you. Not just at the point of grave, but all the way through the grave. I've got you at such a deep level. I've got things that you're not even thinking about. The million little processes that your mother did to make sure that you survived, the Lord's got those and more. All of the thoughtfulness, all of the love, all of the tender concern. John 10, 10, Jesus says this. The, she, the, the, the God who became a person, the shepherd who became a sheep, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Naturally, we don't lay down our lives. We defend our life at all costs. But here the good shepherd willingly gives himself to his sheep. And so how do we deal with these wants? How do we deal with the very real things that we need and the very real reality that God has everything that we need? What I'm going to suggest to you is that we live in attention. We live in tension. This is where I'm living all the time. Things will not always be this way, and this is as good as it gets. Things will get better, and right here, right now, this is as good as it gets. This is as good as it gets. When we're with the shepherd, every need, every desire might not be provided, but it's at least accounted for. It's known. And the good shepherd does not withhold because he's stingy. He does not withhold because he doesn't have a plan. He does not withhold because he can't. He withholds for your good and his glory. And so when we're with the good shepherd, this is literally as good as it gets. And now it's for us to slow our soul enough that we go, God, you are good. God, you do have me. God, you've got it. Friends, if you cannot find rest with the good shepherd, nothing and no one will ever bring you rest. If your soul cannot find rest when you're in the presence of God, you're never going to find what you're looking for. Because on one hand, this is as good as it gets to be in the presence of God, to be with the one true God. Jesus said it like this, this is eternal life to know the Father. This is it. To enter into the Master's rest. This is as good as it gets. And God has those needs accounted for and will answer in due season. It will get better. And we're going to live in this tension of gratitude and hope. To live in the tension of gratitude and hope. Things will get better, and this is as good as it gets. When we live in gratitude, and this is something I'm constantly trying to impart to our children, if we live in gratitude, you literally live in the best possible scenario of your current circumstances. When we choose to put on eyes of faith and gratitude, we choose to enter into the best possible scenario of our current circumstances. And so when we choose to slow down and recognize God is with me, he's my good shepherd, my soul's at rest, though I have needs and wants, I'm going to trust him with these things. We enter into eternal life. We enter into the best possible scenario of our current circumstances. We enter into the very best that life has to offer. And we live our best Monday right now. Or our best Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday. So we must teach our soul to rest. We've got to teach our soul to slow down. We've got to teach our soul 
the beauty of contentment. We've got to teach our soul gratitude. We've got to slow down. And say it with David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Father God, I pray that this truth would start to become a reality for each of us. God, that we would choose to slow down enough to recognize you've got us this far. You're going to get us all the way through. God, you've been with us at every moment of pain and trial. God, you've been with us in the dark nights where, you thought, where we thought nobody was with us. In those moments of extreme pain, in those moments that we'd like to turn our eyes away from, God, you didn't turn your eye away from it. You came in. So Lord, right now I pray that these truths of you being our shepherd will go from our head into our heart. That in the midst of the lack and the pain and the uncertainty, we trust that you are working. You are a good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. That you've not withheld any good thing from us. Lord, that you came to serve and not be served. You came humble and lowly of heart. David learned this trick or key to mental health. He would speak to his soul. Our soul is our mind, our will, our emotions. It's how you feel. It's our feels. And so I'm going to say some words to my soul and invite you to say some words to your soul after me. My soul, be settled. Be still, my longing heart. Curb your restless desires. Turn your emotions onto the Lord. Hungry eyes, be filled with the beauty of God. Your shepherd is near. He holds your past, your present, and your future. He knows it all. He's working for your good. So settle down. Let the Lord be your shepherd. He's going to take care of you. He's going to provide everything that you need. Perhaps this sort of trust in the good shepherd is something new for you. This is what it would mean to be a Christian. This is what it would mean to be a follower of God is just say, yeah, I'm a sheep in the pasture of Almighty God. And if you've never had that sort of relationship with God, if you've seen him maybe as a tyrant or an adversary to your life, and you'd like to begin a new kind of relationship with him, one that's not adversarial, one that's trusting, one that is giving your life to him and receiving his life from him, and then at the end of the service, we'd love to stand with you and pray with you and see God move in your life in a brand new way. God loves you. He's not against you. He's working for your God. He's a better father than I am to my children. He's a better shepherd than David was to his sheep. He's on your team. He's on your side. And he wants to start a relationship with you today. God, I thank you that you're good, that you're the good shepherd that lays down his life for his sheep. I pray, Lord, that every person in here would have that kind of relationship with you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.